God was an abstract concept. The big man in the sky who watched my every move and tallied my sins, he saw everything, including the nights at home where mom and dad fought. He saw when I couldn't fight back. And in my helplessness, I couldn't see him. Growing up, the unspoken rules were don't speak, don't trust, and don't feel. Love felt conditional. Midway through my freshman year of high school, I felt that love had run out. Alone one night, I tried to take my own life. By the grace of God, I failed. And when I was finally released, I knew that there had to be something more. That's when I reached out to a couple of my friends who went to a place called Edge, a high school youth group that met as part of this church called Kensington. I didn't know what to expect. I just walked in that Sunday night broken and not really knowing what I was looking for. I don't remember exactly what the service was about, but I remember hearing about God in a way that I had never received before. Not just what He was, but who He is and who I am in Him. Something about unconditional love. That didn't make sense to me at the time. I went to small groups, something that was also a first-time thing for me, and immediately I was introduced to something that I wasn't familiar with. Vulnerability. I found myself in a place where it felt safe to hurt. I came back each week because that's what it became for me, a safe place. A place where those three unspoken rules I had grown up with all my life were challenged. Don't speak became tell. Tell your story because it's important. There is strength in vulnerability. I learned that guarding my heart didn't mean shutting everyone out, but letting people in and trusting those who continually showed me that they cared about me. Don't feel became lament, that emotions are a gift from God and we weren't meant to ignore them. God wants us to bring ourselves to Him with all that we are, the good and the bad. I didn't understand it my first time at Edge, and it took me a while to finally put a name to the way that community treated me. But it was love. Real, pure love. Love that was patient and kind. Love that had no boundaries and no basis in what I could do. Just love. God had given me something that I had never had before. A family the way families are intended to be. There was nothing I could do in that moment other than give my life to Christ. I joined the band. I began to sing worship on Sunday nights. It was different from the way I used to sing in the car or in the school choir. I was singing out of overflow. I was full with the revelation of God's love and I had to share it. That's another thing that God gave me during my time there at Edge, my identity, my purpose. I flourished in the world of worship because that was how God had wired me to interact with Him best. I feel closest to Him when my eyes are closed and my hands are raised. I know that no matter where I end up in my future, whether it's on the mission field, working in an office, or singing from a stage. I will always be a worship leader. It's what I was created to do. And I found this through the encouragement of the family that God gave me through Kensington. I would not be where I am today without these people. Now I'm out of high school, and I'm trying to become that person that led me to Christ years ago. I came back to work for EDGE because I can empathize with the students there. I know the struggle of searching for your identity, for acceptance, and I believe in the impact that place has. I've experienced it. I walked in that first Sunday night not knowing what I was looking for. I needed a home. I needed a family. I needed to be shown the kind of love I didn't know existed. But I know now that all those things come from God. And through the people who knew Him, they came. I was looking for the real Jesus, and I found Him there. When I hear this story, I realize I get to be a part of a young woman's life who was lost, broken, and living in hiding. And then to see her meet Jesus Christ through our high school ministry. It's an amazing story. And then not only for her to find that she was loved and cared for by Jesus Christ, but, but that now she becomes a woman of purpose and mission of leading the next generation to find out who Jesus Christ is. Do you realize that when we give to Kensington, we invest 
in ministries like EDGE, where hundreds and hundreds of high school kids are finding that they matter to God, that they have a life of purpose. Listen, this is worth everything we have to see this happen. It actually excites me about growing old, knowing that there's a next generation of warriors like Emily that are gonna follow Jesus Christ, that are gonna lead his church like she's leading it now. And so as we come to year end, I'm asking you to make a year end Christmas gift to Kensington, to invest in Edge, to invest in Emily, to invest in the future. Who else is gonna reach the thousands of high school students in this region if we don't? This is worth everything we have.